And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with the Game Boy Geek. Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Hey, over the last year, a cooperative game called Police Precinct came out on Kickstarter. And it's been highly and probably justly awarded some titles of people put them in their top 10 Kickstarter games. It is a great cooperative game that I enjoy. And now today we're gonna to be looking at an expansion for that called The Heat. Uh, so this is a, an expansion that adds, it changes the setup, uh, that, that you can change the difficulty to easier, harder, very hard or impossible. And then it adds some ways to actually make it a little easier for you after doing so. So let's check out how you get these cards, what they do, what it does to the setup, and I'll let you know what I think. Let's take a look. Okay, to set up the heat, once you've set up Police Precinct using the normal rules, in addition to those, you have some options here. Uh, you have an easy difficulty called blue, a hard, red, a war, which is very hard, and hot, which is almost impossible or probably impossible called no way. So let's say we were setting up the hard version. Uh, what we would do is punks removed. In addition to after setting up, we would remove two punks from the game and then we would add two punks to the board. In this case, we would set up no additional emergencies and everybody would remove one of the police cards they were dealt at the beginning of the game. Where at the very hard, uh, you would remove three punks and add three punks. And you'd add an additional emergency and remove two police cards. So you can see you can have different levels of difficulty. Easy is supposed to be easier than the base game. Hard is harder than the base game. Now, when you are setting these up, sometimes you may have to increase the crime marker. Now, if by adding criminals, you don't have any, or if you add uh, you know, an emergency and the, the urgent marker has to get moved just like normal, your crime can actually go up before the game starts. Speaking of increasing the crime marker, that's one of the ways you get some of the new cards. So let's talk about what's in the expansion. There's two sets of cards here. We have the gear and we have the specialists. There's eight of each of these cards. And so what happens is how these cards come out is one of two ways. Once, if the crime marker goes up, you automatically bring out one of each of these and you flip it face up and you put it in the police station. The other way is if at any point you gain a donut by doing something, you roll a dice and if you get a five, you can choose one of these two cards to come out. And if you roll a six, you one of each of these come out. Those are the two ways that these cards come out. So let's take a look at the cards. Let's take a look at the gear cards first. So these are cards that stay with you for the whole game once you have them. So we have tear gas. Now, it costs one police card. So how you get these cards is you have to go to the police station. You either have to begin or end your turn at the police station normally and spend the cost. In this case, you would have to discard a police card. There's also an option to do a speed through type of thing where you don't have to stop. If you're passing by the speed state, the police station, and you want to pick one of these up, you discard one additional police card to the cost. So in this case, if I started or ended my turn here, it'd be one police card to that I would use to get this. If I was speeding through and wanted to get pick it up on the way, in this case, I would drop this police card and an additional one. So let's look at what these do. Tear gas, your vehicle counts as two when calculating support backup for other players who are trying to handle emergencies or make arrests. Pretty awesome. This one is free, it's a megaphone. When dealing with an urgent emergency, roll an extra die. This one's cool to have. This one costs two police cards, it's a forensic kit. Draw two extra cards when taking the investigation action, if done without any sort of assistance from others. So this is good to get if you're not good at investigating. The GPS costs one police card. After phase three, the police draw card phase, your turn, move up to two extra speed, uh, street spaces because you have the GPS. This one costs one police card, the first aid kit. When you have the first aid kit, you may play police cards even when some of the special circumstances otherwise prevented this. For example, gang cards and things of the sorts. Body armor, it's one police card, and with the body armor, if you're injured, instead of going to the hospital, you ignore penalties and go to the police station where you can immediately uh, dispatch any or all patrol officers. Pretty cool. The shotgun is free, and you roll two extra die when you attempt to arrest the member of the street gang. And the last one is a camera, it costs a donut, and you get to draw one extra card when investigating, and you do not need to shuffle the deck afterwards if you don't want to. Pretty powerful if you have one of the characters that aren't good at investigating. Now let's take a look at the specialists. Now, unlike the gear cards, which you keep the whole game, 
When you get a specialist card, they're a one-time use. So let's see this one here. The cost is one police card. It's the Crybe Lab Technician. Once during the game at any point, during any time, all players, regardless of turn or your location, the Crybe Lab Technician will allow you to look at the top five end of investigation cards of any deck in any location, then return them back on any order. That's huge, huge. The street crime expert, he's free. Once during the game, the street crime expert allows you to reroll all the dice you just rolled when you were arresting an attempt. The next guy is the unit morale specialist. He's also free. Once during the game, when you're riding with this guy, you can collect two donuts to be given to other players. This can only happen when you move past or from the donut shop. The crime analyst is free. Once during the game, the crime analyst allows you to avoid an event card you just drew after reading it, by placing it at the bottom of the stack and drawing a new one. Pretty cool. The gang suppression expert's free. Once during the game, the gang suppression expert will allow you to re-roll one die, rolled by anyone, in relation to a randomly placed punk. That could help stop a gang from forming. Emergency services unit is free. Once during the game, during the action phase of any players, the emergency service unit rider, he's riding with you, and in your vehicle, he allows you to double the value of each patrol offer token location. So when you have those patrol officers, essentially he doubles those. The communication specialist is also free. Once during the game, at the beginning of any player's turn, the communication specialist riding in your vehicle allows you to send any number of police vehicles back to the police station. Hey, you could have them go there and get some of these cards. Once during the game, regardless of your location, the special agent allows you to successfully handle any emergency in any location and receive the rewards just like as if you did it. And this one costs a donut. So when they come out, they come to the police station and it just helps you win the game a little bit easier. It gives you some more decisions because now when you go to the police station, you can either stroll through and get them or you can start or end your turn there. And remember, you can still upgrade at the police station. You can upgrade your character and use that as a turn and we get these guys in addition to it. All right, well, there is the heat. So now I do love uh, Police Precinct. Now, I think the game alone without expansions is quite great. Uh, I, you know, I, I'm not sure that I really absolutely need this expansion, but if I'm a fan of Police Precinct and given the small price tag that this expansion is, it's kind of a no-brainer. If you like the game, this is gonna give it a little bit of a new life. Uh, the thing I really liked about it is, you know, when you got the base game, you looked through the rules, they gave you all these different ways that you could change difficulty. Um, you know, and it just gave you almost too much freedom where it's like, well, what do I do? One, one, if I change one variable, it changes it a lot. Or if I change another variable, maybe not so much. So I like how they kind of went out and did some more play testing, changing the variables, and then came up with those four or five different ways where blue, red, hot, you know, they gave you some specific ways to, to change the startup that kind of you and other people around can say, hey, have you played it on this level? Have you played it on that level? And you're talking the same language. So I like how they did that testing for us so that we can now set the game at a different level uh, and it's there as sort of a new standard that you can use to measure up against other players in your previous uh, game. So I did like that about it. Uh, and then once you make it harder, <laughs> those cards do make it easier. I, I like the fact that the gear stuff stays with you and gets used by that person where the, the officers or the specialists, they get used one time. I mean, again, thematically, those make sense. Um, you know, going to the police station to get those can be good, can be bad. You know, in the regular game, the base game, uh, we never often went to the police station to go there to stop and use it a whole turn to upgrade our characters because Gosh, it just feel like there was so many other things going on that it wasn't worth it. But now you can go there, use a turn to get a character, but you're starting or stopping there. Now you can get some of these extra cards in advance. And I think it opens up different, uh, you know, abilities there. So it doesn't radically change the game. It's not going to be this, ooh, you can't play the game without it. It's a mini expansion. It adds some good things. I'll probably never play without it because it does give you those different ideas. It does give you the different abilities. It does give you those different strategies. Um, that I liked. So sure, it's a good expansion if you like Police Precinct, especially at the low price point. You're gonna want to check this out. No brainer. Uh, it's not gonna completely change the game. There's no like really cool new mechanic or anything like that. I mean, it's it's good. So if you like pre Police Precinct and you got 15 bucks or whatever the Kickstarter is, go out and get it, and uh, you'll probably enjoy it. I'd like to see some new expansions also that maybe um, give you a complete new deck of event cards where you're randomly pull, randomly taking a certain amount of those so you never know which ones are out. The gas leak might not come out this, this game. You know, taking that car 
or the van and getting it to somewhere might not come out. So, because after you play the game a lot of times, you know where, you know, which cards are in there and you can think about it. Or I'd like to see some expansions come out where they expand the event deck and some other things like that. But this is a good step uh, and it's a no brainer. If you like the game, you got to probably get it anyway. So check out the heat. Hey, one more thing before you go. If you're about to drop a comment on this YouTube page for this video and you're expecting interaction or a personal response from me, uh, I recommend the place to do that is at my Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash thegameboygeek because I don't get notified when YouTube videos get comments on the Dice Tower Network because I don't own the channel. So if you want to interact with me directly, I'll see you at my Facebook page. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Oh.